Hello, and welcome back to Coin Lady Channel. It's undeniable that Ripple's efforts influenced some consumers to buy XRP. That seems self evidently accurate to me. In fact, I'm conceding that one of the reasons I was discussing this very topic only a few days ago, and one of the reasons I purchased XRP was because of Ripple, because it had to do with the ecosystem itself. Now consider this. Would it be reasonable to buy XRP if there were no developers building on top of the XRP ledger, or is it preferable if there are several developers developing on top of a blockchain? In. Moreover, you exit. Doesn't this just prove the SEC's point? Well, if that's what you want to imply, then by all means. What about this, though? My involvement in the secondary market for XRP does not involve any form of plan involving Ripple. That is still why I will not accept it. Is it a cardinal sin, for example, for developers to build on top of blockchain technology, but I know the idea that we can't look at an ecosystem and see that there are developers and then have that? That is not something I should consider while making a purchase. The world seems to be turned upside down. As such, I kind of gave some of my ideas on this a few days ago, but there has been more conversation since then, and I want to share some information here from attorney John Deaton, kind of fleshing out the notions. However, in my opinion, this is not a negative development. Now, you can debate whether or not this will hurt Ripple's legal position and to what extent. Fine. However, it is still not true that Ripple and I share a business. Holy crap, no way am I, believe me, I'm not kidding. But before I go any farther, let me clarify something. I come from no financial or legal background. Nothing I say should be taken as medical, legal, or financial advice, and you shouldn't make any purchases or sales based on what I say. Right? For fun and as a pastime, I enjoy making videos about crypto-related topics to share on YouTube. Okay, here's yesterday's front page headline from CryptoBasic. Even if Ripple is marketing XRP as an investment contract, according to Deaton, that doesn't make XRP a security. And in the end, they do cover the fact that it originates in these parts. Apparently, there is a Twitter user whose handle is at Caesar Corvinus. 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 Whatever, Corvinus. And then he continued with this. Where does that leave people like myself who have been long-term investors in XRP, Ripple's currency? Absolutely, they were familiar with Ripple. Having David Schwartz serving in an official capacity for the National Security Agency was one of the primary selling points for me when I made my investment back in 2016. What he means, by the way, is the date of the inception of XRP. Ripple's XRP was widely recognized. The company wasn't always called Ripple, by the way. It's sort of hilarious because they were previously known as New Coin and Open Coin before being rebranded to Ripple, which is terrible because it increases confusion. The token, formerly known as Ripple, is now referred to simply as XRP, just as the corporation changed its name. And that's totally cool with me. Keeping and disseminating that message, which is true and factual, helps reduce confusion. When he first got involved, Ripple coins were more widely, at least sometimes, called just Ripple coins, which is what he's alluding to there. True, that is the case. John Deaton retweeted that and responded affirmatively. I told her, you're not alone, there are others, just like you. And if Ripple contacted you directly and sold you XRP, you could argue that the Howey test was satisfied since, first, you exchanged cash for XRP from Ripple and, second, you entered into a common enterprise with Ripple via vertical commonality. And third, you were complacently anticipating returns on your XRP investments, thanks to the hard work of Ripple's Chief Technology Officer David Schwartz, management, and board of directors. It's a different story if you acquired XRP on the secondary market rather than straight from Ripple and didn't have any sort of agreement with the company. Like Paul said in his letter, that is also my experience. So, just because I understood that Ripple was a vital piece in the XRP ecosystem does not mean that I embarked on a joint venture with the company. 
That doesn't make XRP a security or indicate any wrongdoing on their part. Of course not. This is an important point that John Dighton makes. And he argues it's a different story if you've got XRP for non-investment activities, like making ledger transfers, using the decentralized exchange, etc. To be clear, XRP is not a security, even if Ripple sold you an investment contract with XRP as the underlying asset. And it doesn't make any of my XRP or my kids XRP a security. Dead on. What I'm going to say, though, is that if it did, if merely buying more of them on secondary markets made them a security, then how the heck are people in the United States meant to invest in anything having to do with cryptocurrency? Anything. Therefore, the only thing you could put your money into is a coin that has no user base and sees no development. No builder has chosen to construct on top of that particular block. Since there is no other option, you should get that one. That's so stupid it hurts. Maybe we felt pushed to buy into the XRP ecosystem due to various circumstances, and now we're supposed to feel guilty about doing so. And we should feel guilty about this as if it were a criminal act. It's complete and utter bullshit. And, uh, there's also today's headline you posted. Millions of people heard about XRP after the SEC lawsuit against Ripple. Wow, that was quick. Actually, that's not what they mean at all. This is obviously not what he meant to say. So, let me to correct the record a little bit on that. Despite the litigation, he does not believe that millions of individuals have suddenly become interested in XRP. He was making a different argument, but it pertained to this one I'm making. Someone, funnily enough, tweeted, I first heard about Ripple due to the lawsuit. One of the people who created the League of Legends name. Now, Lawyer Deaton shared that on Twitter and added, There is no doubt in my mind that many more XRP holders learned about Ripple and Brad Garlinghouse for the first time as a direct result of the SEC and the litigation. More than 4 million unique XRP addresses exist. In the present day, there are XRP holders who are unaware of Ripple's existence. Let us pause for a moment of reflection. Then that must be so. Today, more people than ever before have heard about Ripple. To that extent, I concur. However, today's misleading headline was not accurate. That is where I have some reservations. So, what Attorney Deaton says is right, it's not that millions of people have suddenly become aware. And so, Attorney Deaton adds, I was talking to a lawyer who said, but John, some of these affidavits are from folks who bought XRP in January or February of 2021. After the legal battle. How plausible do you find this to be? He claims that certain witnesses to the litigation afterwards filed statements stating that they had not been informed of Ripple. They are unaware of what Ripple is. That can't be true, right? John reports that my answer was to inspect the mailing addresses. Japan, Mexico, the Netherlands, and down under. As the old saying goes, not everybody gives a S word, or even cares, about what the SEC is doing in the United States. To that end, is it so unexpected that people in nations that are, well, foreign to me would know less about Ripple the company? Because, believe me when I say this, many people are only interested in the largest coins available. I think I'll just get myself a small portfolio going, something with a little variety. Possibly invest in the 10 largest virtual currencies without doing any due diligence. But that's what people do. Okay. And if you only care about getting your name out there, it's not the craziest concept. It's not the craziest notion if you're just beginning your investigation and want to test the waters by immersing yourself in them. To clarify, I carried out said action toward the end of 2017. Initially, I invested in cryptocurrencies on an exchange while knowing very nothing about them. That was a component of my investigation, and I invested a small sum of money as a result. Even though it shouldn't be the case, people nevertheless act in these ways. I didn't feel comfortable investing all of my money in this venture, so I made sure to verify that this was not the case. Even though I've been familiar with Ripple since its inception in 2017, that doesn't mean everyone else did. 
John Deaton, however, claims to have proof that proves the opposite. The majority of people were either completely unaware of Ripple or, if they had heard of the company, they had no idea what it accomplished. As I've mentioned before, he's backed up his claims with hard evidence. Okay, I see now what it is. Since I didn't have this information from attorney John Dietz when I originally uploaded the video on this topic a few days ago, I thought I'd produce a little video to expand on a little bit and give John Deaton's additional thoughts. So I guess I'd like to elaborate on that a little bit. But once again, we shouldn't be bashful about admitting if Ripple played a role in you buying XRP. What does that prove? That's not a negative thing at all. This is simply an admission that Ripple's XRP ecosystem is flourishing. Part of it is, as attorney Deaton remarked, who gives a damn as long as you're not buying directly from Ripple? Since I make no pretense of being a lawyer, that is just my uninformed view. Not that I agree, but surely everyone else does. Certainly, in my opinion. No, I don't give out financial advice. Nothing I say or write should be used as a basis for making financial decisions. Please like and subscribe as always. See you later, bye.